welcome back to yet another episode. So, as you know, uh, you know I'm going to be doing the Pentax uh, K3 monochrome converted uh, model that I received on loan again from Gator Guy, one of the moderators on the Pentax forums, and I'm going to be comparing that with the original color Pentax K3. The K3 Mark III will be compared later uh, in a later video. Now, this is going to be a multi-part uh, series in the comparison because there's a gonna, there's going to be a lot to cover. I do want to make one thing very very clear though. If you're looking for mathematical charts and graphs and super super science science and all that stuff, then I don't know. Go find Bill Nye the Science Guy because that is not what I'm doing here, and I've never done that type of stuff on my channel. What I focus on is the real world application of the differences because at the end of the day, we are taking photos, whether it's portraits or products or landscapes, wildlife, birding, cityscapes, astro, all those things. The charts and the graphs and all this other stuff, it doesn't lead to the artistic visualization of the images themselves. We're photographers, the cameras capture images that we want, and then we look at how good the images came out. That's what I focus on, so this is not some super science, crazy, mind-bending thing or anything like that. Never has been, never will be. I just look at the real-world applications of what the differences are with different pieces of equipment and how it actually translates into the images that you're going to be capturing. So. I just wanted to get, get that out of the way so that the expectations are understood. Now, I've set up a inside test bed, uh, as you will see in a moment, and this is what we're going to start with. Um, it's not, uh, you know, a focus chart or anything like that. It is a scene in my basement with multiple uh, fabrics and uh, different shades um, from completely black to shadows to uh, you know, more of a highlight type of thing uh, with different patterns and materials. So you should be able to see a difference in regards to resolution and uh, dynamic range and gradation in regards to shadows to highlights to mid-range between the monochrome converted K3 and the original Pentax K3. So with that said, let's uh, start shooting. And here is the scene that I'm going to be shooting. As you can see, there's a lot of uh, patterns on that pillow at the bottom. There's a different fabric right along here for this carpet and or blanket and uh, different shades and colors and patterns on this blanket here. Uh, we've got some white elements here and uh, obviously the TV over here is all black. And uh, we've got some browns over on this side uh, with some grays and some white where the K's are for the boxes for the Pentax equipment. And this is the scene that I'm going to be shooting. It is low light uh, as of right now. Let's just quickly take a look here. As of right now, perfect dead even exposure on the monochrome K3 is f2.8 ISO 200 at one sixth of a second. So I will be able to do high ISO shooting in this. This is why I decided to do it this way. And uh, let's just get the shots and then uh, we'll go from there. So first things first, I know that this question is gonna come up. Why didn't you just show the DNGs? Well, here is why I couldn't just do DNGs. I'm gonna have to do the comparison using the JPEGs from the camera because the DNG files on the K3 color come out as color, which doesn't work for the purpose of this video. So it's gonna have to be the JPEGs. That's just the way it's gonna have to be. I am gonna leave, leave the DNGs for both in another folder so you can download them, do your own evaluations, whatever you wanna do. Now, one thing that I did notice is the K3 color at the exact same settings that I had on the monochrome converted K3, the K3 color uh, was actually overexposed by 0.3 EV. So these do look very, very similar. If it was actually 
uh, you know, a dead even exposure, the K3 color images would have been a tad bit darker. So I just went, I'd used the exact same settings on both cameras. So if the K3 monochrome uh, converted camera was showing a dead even exposure at, uh, for this one, one sixth of a second, I use the exact same settings for the uh, K3 color. And that's just how it is. Uh, if you're really paying attention here and you're looking at the dates and the times, I did not change any of the date and time settings on the K3 monochrome camera. The K3 color camera, those settings are actually up to date. Those are the correct settings. So it is what it is. Anyway, okay, so here is ISO 200, which is base ISO uh, recommended from what I understand for the K3 monochrome. So that's where I started. And you can, it's a little hard to tell, but you can see that there is a bit more brightness to the K3 monochrome, which is on the right hand side of the screen here. The K3 monochrome uh, does have a just a very, very slight bit more contrast. It's a little tad bit of a brighter image as you can, if you look at this pillow here, you can see there's just more contrast, a bit more pop compared to the pillow, which is more of just a flat gray scale on the K3 color image. Same thing here with uh, this blanket. It's a bit more, it's a bit brighter uh, over here. And if you look at the histograms, you'll notice that the K3 monochrome, the histogram is a bit more spread out. Uh, so it's not quite as much of a cutoff. Now we're going to move to the next one. So I just basically kept shooting to increase the ISO for each one of these. And uh, so this is ISO 400. And it's basically the same. There's just a tad bit more spread on the K3 monochrome image. However, in flat bland lighting, which is basically what the scene was, there isn't that much of a difference, to be honest. There really is not a huge, massive difference whatsoever. The image sizes are a tad bit different though. Uh, here, the file size on the color one is 8.642 megabytes. And for the monochrome converted one, it's 8.541 megabytes. That's just how it came out. But th there is a fair amount of detail from both. Uh, not that much of a difference to really take any note of anything. Um, you know, they're pretty, pretty clean. Pretty clean images. Uh, you know, it's really nothing to shout home about or really point out at this point. Uh, so let's just move on to the next, and that is ISO 800. So these are all exactly the same, 35 millimeters, 1 25th of a second, 1 25th of a second, ISO 800, ISO 800. So again, use the exact same settings. And again, more of the same. The histogram is a bit more spread out on the K3 monochrome image, and it is ever so slightly just a tad bit brighter. Now, Yes, there is a very slight difference uh, with these images. I guess the, the either the mounting plate or the bottom of the camera, one or the other, just a slightly different offset for some strange reason. Uh, I have the exact same plate mounted to both cameras in the exact same location using a fixed tripod. This is just how it came out. I have no explanation for it. That's just how it came out. But again, you can see there is a bit more contrast in the K3 monochrome image versus the K3 color image. And it's just basically more of the same all across the board. Um, for the sake of the video, let's skip to ISO 3200. Okay. So again, it's more of the same. This is a, a tad bit more contrasty. Uh, let's just zoom in on that pillow here. It's a good pillow for testing. And with this, uh, very, 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 very slight advantage of uh, sharpness on the K3 monochrome image. Again, it's very, very, very subtle. Uh, again, it's in regards to the lighting for this specific 
shot um, you know, that really didn't push uh, the K3 color uh, versus the monochrome differences. Um, the outdoor shots, those are completely different. I'm going to put those ones up in a different video. All right, so now we're starting to get into the high, high, high ISO. Uh, so 6400. Now let's just quickly zoom in here. Go down to that pillow again. Zoom in here. Go to the same pillow. Okay, and you'll notice that it's not really that different. I mean, some of the lines are a bit more apparent on the K3 monochrome image uh, compared to the K3 color. However, there are other lines that seem to be slightly more defined on the K3 color uh, than they are on the K3 monochrome. Now, again, both cameras are set up exactly the same, uh, identical settings for the JPEG output, uh, just to make sure that there was absolute consistency for the findings. Um, you know, th th there's no hidden anything. Now let's go on to the next one here. And this is, what is this? 12,800 ISO. So once again, let's uh, zoom in. We'll go down to that pillow. I could have actually just done this with just that pillow just to show uh, sharpness. And with this one, uh, it's still, again, it's pretty, uh, from what I can see, it is pretty close. Uh, except for this circle here. There is more detail on the K3 monochrome image than there is all across the board on the K3 color image. Um, so yeah, it's, uh, you know, but at the same time, the differences aren't like out of this world, uh, and this little section right here and this, uh, let's just go down here. Okay. So this one, there is, I would say a lot more detail on the K3 monochrome image, uh, than there is on the K3 color image. Uh, even this section here isn't really that defined. Uh, it's almost smeared uh, compared to the K3 monochrome image. So once you start pumping up the ISO, it does really start to go massively in the favor of the K3 monochrome converted image. Um, again, as I said, the outdoor shots in ideal lighting, those are completely and utterly different. Uh, you know, but with the flat lighting, as I had it here, which is very, it's basically just bland, even it would be like going outdoors shooting in just completely overcast sky where it's just gray, nothing special. So here's 25,800. Now let's just quickly zoom in again. And yeah, so both of them do have a fair amount of noise. They do. Uh, again, the lighting was not ideal, uh, so it was more of a stress test. However, looking at these images, the K3 monochrome is much sharper than the K3 color. Uh, let's just move over here and see if you can read anything on these boxes. Okay, yep, yeah, you can read them. You can read the stuff on the boxes. Not bad, not bad. It looks pretty similar. Pretty similar. The K3 monochrome does seem to have a bit more of the hue shift uh, more accurately. Uh, you know, it does seem to actually have that. Um, I'm not even sure what to call it. The the, the hue gradation. There we go. Uh, in regards to uh, the actual output. Let's just go up here, bring that over, make it fair, make it fair. So yeah, there is a bit more uh, contrast in regards to the gradations. It's more accurate. Uh, you know, unless you were actually here and you saw the scene yourself, it'd be difficult for you to really tell how much of a difference it made, but um, you'll just have to take my word for it. 
<laughs> this is more accurate in regards to the subtle hue shifts and uh, just the shading differences across uh, these the striped areas here. And uh, let's just quickly go one more to the final ISO, uh, which is what, 56,000, 51,000, 56,000. It's been a long day. 51,200 ISO. Both of these are grainy, grainy like no tomorrow. However, down in this shadowed area here, you can clearly see there is more detail on the K3 monochrome converted uh, image. And again, more of the same. This histogram is a bit more spread out. There is more light information. Can't say color information because it's only black and white, but there is more light information here. And also keep in mind the K3 color was set uh, with the same settings, but it actually produced 0.3 EV overexposure on this. So if I had it both set for uh, just dead even exposure, this would actually be darker. Um, let's just quickly zoom in 100% here and let's see if, uh, let's see this pillow, go in 100%, go down to this pillow. And with this pillow, yeah, there is more defined lines on the K3 monochrome image uh, in regards to the patterns and the stitching and everything for this pillow compared to the smear fest that is the K3 mon uh, sorry K3 color image so there, there there is a fair amount of difference especially as you go up in the isos and again this is in very poor lighting <laughs> so this is not the most ideal situation but it's a good stress test and let's just see if we can read that box here. Okay, there's a pretty big difference. So on the K3 color image, one, it just looks more smeared. And two, this letter here, this uh, looks like an O, boom X O, is completely not defined. Uh, whereas over here, you can see it clearly is a D. And the actual uh, product is called boom X D. So, the K3 monochrome is actually picking up more line for line detail than the uh, K3 color. So that uh, pretty much concludes this uh, first studio test preliminary evaluation of the images. Again, I am going to leave these uh, for you guys to check out online. Uh, it'll be in my uh, Google Drive. Google Drive. It'll be available for you guys to download and play with and whatever you want to do. Uh, I have not uh, put the DNGs through uh, DxO or anything. I just wanted to show exactly as they came out of the camera. Um, you know, at, the higher the quality you get out of the camera, the better it is for when you're actually doing your processing, right? So I wanted to show you exactly how it comes out of the camera. Unfortunately, as I said, it didn't make sense to do the DNGs because they would have been in color for the K3 color versus strictly being in black and white for the K3 monochrome, right? So that would not have been a proper comparison and this is what it actually would have come out as. Um, so you can't just process the K3 monochromes directly. Uh, they do have to be run through uh, a separate program which will maintain the DM, uh, it will not apply the DM mosaicing and it will maintain the actual black and white um, monochrome image. Uh, so yeah, you know, feel free to play around with it, uh, but you should actually be using um, monochrome to DNG converter. And uh, from there, that's how I did this one. Uh, from there, then you can use whatever editing program you want. But this is just the preliminary evaluation of these images. And uh, yeah, it's pretty interesting findings, actually. Uh, th I thought the difference would be larger than it actually was. Uh, but I am going to do outdoor testing and uh, take a look at those images and go from there. By the time this is all said and done, you guys should all have more than enough information to see if a monochrome dedicated camera is actually in your future. Stay tuned. Thanks for watching.